your name takes us to mahabharata yes sir tell us about abhimanyu of that era uh sir abhimanyu is one of the characters in the epic mahabharata he is the son of arjun and he's known for his uh, act of bravery that he exuded in uh, the mahabharata war what bravery did he exude uh sir basically abhimanyu only knew the art of uh, entering the chakravyu but not exiting it but still despite knowing this and also knowing the fact that he may not even come alive of it he still uh, had the courage to enter it that's certainly brave but do you think you ha- you are confronted with a problem which you cannot which you have not yet mastered or not known completely how to solve but you still go in and lose yourself or lose something important is that wise uh sir the situation differs uh, i mean that was that was a war at that point of a time and uh, basically sir there was no option because none of the pandavas knew the art of entering it arjun was away so uh, somebody had to tackle uh, the kauravas for the day so even at the cost of his life he managed to ensure that uh, the other collateral damages does not take place and he engaged all of them at once but yes sir in other cases uh, in our day to day lives or in professional lives one should know uh, the the uh, the shortcomings beforehand and if uh, something one does not know completely then one should have an uh, t- before entering into that thing one should have an informed uh, consultation regarding it and if still he is not able to get it i think so one can still avoid it there are other people to handle it um, okay so do are you aware of what is a chakravyuha what is its formation uh, why is it so complex to conquer come in and get out uh sir mahabharat mentions a uh, various military formations uh chakravyu is one of them uh sir basically it's uh, i'm not sure about the exact uh, formation that it has but it has uh, uh as the name suggests chakra sir it's mainly a kind of circular formation of the army troops and uh, one has to enter the middle of the circle in order to uh say break into the view sir so this is all what i know about it all right uh, i see from your uh, def that you are an agm level officer in nabard yes sir since 2016 you have been quite some time you are at a very good level in your organization which is doing excellently for very good also <coughs> why do you want to leave that role which uh by the way is quite impactful especially for our rural economy and agriculture why do you want to leave that and try your um, luck or chances in civil services uh sir it's not about leaving uh, nabard basically sir i consider myself extremely fortunate to uh, be serving in nabard uh, but sir as far as civil services is concerned it was always my first choice even before joining nabard sir i was taking civil services attempts and uh, i believe sir uh, with my experience in nabard uh, apart from doing a few things in the field myself i was fortunate enough i also came to know that what i am doing in a particular field i can replicate then in many other fields and also can uh, scale up the level of work so grade and scale of work can also be uh, enhanced when i enter to uh, enter into civil services so that gave me a further push uh, to again take the exam and get into civil services what is your current job profile what do you look after in nabard right now uh, sir currently i am looking after four districts i am uh, uh, the officer in charge of rohtak cluster office so the main role that i handle is uh, dealing with stakeholders like uh, farmer producer organizations self help groups and also banks and representing nabard in various district level for us and monitoring of nabard based projects and directly implementing some of the development initiatives uh, in agriculture domain or uh, skill development and employment generation for the rural people all right can you highlight a couple of major challenges that you face in your job 
सर फर्स्ट चैलेंज दैट आई फील इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स सर बेसिकली वी डील विद द सेक्शन ऑफ सोसाइटी व्हिच इज इन अ वेरी डायर सिचुएशन बी इट द द बिलो पॉवर्टी लाइन वुमेन और द स्मॉल एंड मार्जिनल फार्मर्स सो इन ऑर्डर टू इम्प्लीमेंट एनी डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट फॉर देम बिकॉज वी आर नॉट डायरेक्टली इम्प्लीमेंटिंग द प्रोजेक्ट सर वी नीड सपोर्ट ऑफ द नॉन गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड टू मोबिलाइज द पीपल टू मेक दम अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोजेक्ट and also uh, expect them to contribute uh, maybe monetarily or uh, through other means in the project so that is first challenge second i believe sir is the uh, health of the cooperatives because nabard happens to be the supervisor of the cooperative banks now uh, basically we try to make them a better institution but somewhere sir the level of manpower or the level of technological uh uh say situation in the cooperative somewhere that poses a challenge for making them an effective institution of uh, rural credit uh, dissemination thank you sir almanyu <coughs> uh what is uh, what is ancient name of sonipat uh sir sonipat was known by the name of swarnaprastha in the ancient times uh, who gave this name Sorry, sir. I'm not aware about this. Uh, in your father's profession, you have mentioned government service, public, public sector. Yes, sir. I don't see any difference in uh, government service, public, public sector. Do you uh, do you know what is the difference between government and public sector? Uh, sir, there's a little technical difference between the two. Public sector happens to be more broader framework. like sir uh, we have uh, employment under the government sector which strictly happens to be those people who uh, whose name is mentioned in the gazette of the government whereas public sector we also have certain public sector undertakings like the boards corporations of the government or some statutory bodies so they also form part of the public sector <coughs> you have mentioned in your uh, interest singing yes sir what kind of uh, song do you sing uh sir i sing uh, the hindi movie songs mm -hmm. both old and new which song you like the most sir it's difficult to pick one uh but sir there's a song in the movie uh, a 1942 a love story which happens to be root na jana so that song i believe sir i like the most oh. can you sing few lines of that song sure sir root na jana tumse kahu to main in aankhon mein jo rahu to root na jana tumse kahu to main in aankhon mein jo rahu to fine uh you see nowadays uh, this uniform civil code is widely debated uh in uh, in the constitution in which part and uh, article it is uh, mentioned uniform civil code uh sir it is it is mentioned in the part 4 of the constitution the uh, directive principles of state policy article 44 why it was kept under directive principles why not fundamentals uh sir basically uniform civil code at that moment uh it was debated upon in the constituent assembly and it was found that maybe this is not the conducive time to introduce a uniform civil code but it should be an endeavor of the state to ultimately bring it so that's why sir as a directive it was kept in the dpsps but if it is implemented will it not be violating the articles 24 uh, 25 provisions uh sir i do not see that it would be violating of uh, article 25 because sir in nowhere a uniform civil code prevents a person from uh, practicing or professing one's religion it's only related to certain domains sir 
regarding certain personal laws uh, regarding marriage, adoption, inheritance, maintenance, that UCC is applicable. So it does not uh, infringe upon the right uh, as far as right to religion is concerned. What challenges do you see if this is implemented? Uh, so the most important challenge that I see is that there is an apprehension among uh, various communities that it may somewhere uh, be in conflict with their personal laws. So somewhere they have this feeling that it is kind of entering or encroaching upon their personal uh, law domains. Uh, so I see it's more of an apprehension sir, rather uh, than a, a matter of principle. Okay, fine ma'am. Thank you. Oh. Hey, I am just seeing you this DAF and you have taken optional subject at Paul Science and International Relation. Yes. What's the reason for that? You are in the science stream continuously. What's the reason for that? Uh, Ma'am, initially when I started preparing for civil services, so I had not made up my mind as to which optional I would choose. Uh, but ma'am, over the period of time when I was uh, doing my general studies, so I developed interest in the polity and uh, international relations. So I thought that maybe because optional is a very important part of uh, the civil services examination. So one should have a very profound interest in order to complete the syllabus and get a good score in that. So I uh, thought that maybe political science and international relations can be one. That means this is the one of the reason is that you can score high marks or score could be good in these two subjects. And oh. that's the reason why you have taken? Ma'am, it was not the primary reason. But yes, this was somewhere in the back of my mind that yes, it is one optional where I can score uh, better than maybe some other optional. Okay. Now, you must have heard about a new thing that is encryption, that Bitcoin. So do you know something about that? The cryptocurrency? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, How it works? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, basically, Bitcoin or uh, Bitcoin is a particular kind of cryptocurrency. So, uh, these are basically virtual assets or virtual currencies which are mined through, uh, through certain breaking of certain algorithms. So once they are mined, the owners can uh, basically sell these currencies for their market price, whatever is uh, applicable on that day. And trading happens through the blockchain technology. Uh, like every transaction gets recorded and none of it is uh, can be altered. So one can always see the trail of uh, like uh, from where to where the uh, virtual asset or the currency has gone. So through this, uh, this fun the functioning of uh, the cryptocurrencies take place. Can I purchase the products with the help of the cryptocurrency? Uh, Pam, currently I believe that in India at least, uh, we are not dealing with uh, as far as purchase of products is concerned. It's not, uh, it's not a legal tender that can be used. But ma'am, if in some kind of a black market, uh, if it is being done, then ma'am, I am not aware of it. Many of the corporates are accepting cryptocurrencies. Okay ma'am, Thank, thanks for the information. So that means, that mean, okay, tell me, whether there can be a chance of fraud in the case of cryptocurrency transaction? And what is that called as? If it is yes, then what is that called as? Oh, uh, sorry ma'am, I am not aware of it. Uh, okay, okay. Now, can you tell me that uh, like if I am creating a cryptocurrency and if you say that you have got 100 coins or 100 worth of this thing, yeah, where these transactions have to be stored or where this currency will be stored? How can I know that I have got 100, uh, 100 uh, cryptocurrency coins or bitcoins with me? Where all these transactions will be stored? Uh, Ma'am, I'm not aware about the uh, the central location as to where these coins are stored. But ma'am, as far as a person is concerned, he is able to know this through various platforms that provide for uh, uh, trading in the cryptos. Okay, that is called as a leisure and crypto jacking is there. The fraud is there. 
then you can check the transactions and you can change it and that is what it is there okay thank you okay. abhimanyu yes sir. recently there was a news with respect to brain computer interface neuralink having developed something are you aware of that yes sir can you throw some light please uh sir the uh, tesla's founder elon musk has uh, his company has basically come out with the neuralink and it is it works by inserting a chip in the brain and it can be connected to an external device like a computer and sir the brain actions or like the the brain thoughts they can be channelized into real life actions with the help of that uh, chip like sir suppose i want to change a, a a channel so i just need to think about it or maybe uh, uh, i need to switch on or off the light so through that device sir in future it would be possible for one to uh, do such things so what are the applications of that uh sir one application can be it can be utilized with uh, by by persons with disabilities especially uh, speech disability sir that they whatever they can think and it can be uh, it can be then converted into speech uh, speech so the other person can come to know uh, other applications can be uh, say suppose somebody is thinking about a particular line one can uh, go into typing of the same uh, immediately so one does not have to speak about it and all the operations uh, in the physical world uh which requires a remote or some kind of uh say uh like sir remote control operations that can also be done by just thinking in the brain okay let's move on there were lot of piracy attempts in the red sea region recently and historically also this region has been prone to all those attempts what are the reasons that this particular region is very susceptible to it uh sir the red sea region as uh, in the current times it's mainly due to the the attacks by the houthi rebels that have made the region, uh, region volatile but otherwise also there is there are uh, piracy issues in the uh, in that region mainly sir there are uh, insta unstable regions uh, in and around that area like sir we have somalia we have the horn of africa so there are many uh, pirate groups that are working and the terrorist groups also they are working in the region what is the reason for that this particular region only and not the other regions sir so it's uh, mainly the uh, instability in the region itself like sir yemen happens to be a very volatile region and also the horn of africa countries ethiopia somalia so the government is not able to provide any kind of uh, security as far as the sea lanes of communication is concerned so basically sir it's the deficit of a uh, kind of a security architecture as far as that area is concerned what's your take on the same sex marriage issue are we as a society ready to accept it sir currently i believe that the society is not in the position to accept the uh, same sex marriages because uh, sir ultimately marriage is a broader thing in the sense that it has its societal implications so society somewhere should have an acceptance of the Uh, of the issue and currently sir there is no much consensus in the society and even if we talk about the stance of the government because government also reflects the people's will it has also said the same thing that uh, currently same sex marriage is uh, not not advisable to be legalized abhimanyu i would like to give you a quotation i would like to have your interpretation on that it is written by frederick nietzsche he says that and those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by the one who could not hear the music what is understand can i take a like sir yes and those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by the ones who did not hear the music uh sir basically it means that uh those people who may be uh, acceptable or jubilant by certain things 
they may be considered as mad or stupid by those people who are not aware of the exact reason why they are uh, acceptable or happy or jubilant about something. Okay, thank you, Abhiman. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Hello, Abhiman. Hello. So you have been working in NABARD for past few years. So can you tell me that what role does NABARD's credit support have on small and marginal farmers in financial inclusion? Uh, basically, ma'am, NABARD is a refinancing institution. So NABARD uh, does not directly lend to uh, the small and marginal farmers. But ma'am, NABARD basically provides credit to certain institutions which on the way lends to the small and marginal farmers. Now, there are two mechanisms of it. First is the short term loan. Uh, for that, ma'am, we have instituted the Kisan credit card scheme. Now, almost we have a 90% per, uh, percent plus saturation when it comes to the meeting the short term credit needs of small and marginal farmers. Uh, second is the long term loans, ma'am. For that also, we, have we are providing long term refinancing support to especially the cooperatives, the NBFCs and the RRBs and also certain commercial banks which are on lending to the farmers for their long term capital uh, needs. But there ma'am I believe that there is some gap because uh, it requires some kind of a collateral uh, for uh, the purpose of long term credit needs. So somewhere ma'am there is a, a long way to go to you know satiate that, uh, that need. Okay, and I can see in your def that you were part of cricket team, you play volleyball as well, so they are teamwork. Can you suggest me some key characteristics of high performing team and how you can contribute in creating such an environment? Ma'am, uh, a higher, a high performing team ma'am, apart from the basic competence and skill set, because that, that cannot be substituted by any other element. So one has to possess that. So apart from that, ma'am, the environment in the team should be very positive. There should not be any kind of uh, uh, any kind of uh, demotivating things uh, to be said by the team players, especially the captain to their team players. Second, ma'am, there should always be a kind of uh, atmosphere where the person uh, knows his limitations. So suppose one person does not uh, ca cannot bat well or say some, uh, somebody cannot bowl well. So that limitations need to be identified and need to be uh, course corrected in the times to come. And third ma'am, at least at a, uh, at a junior level, ma'am, one should always maintain calm in the team performance. Even when uh, the team loses, one should not get demotivated or lose calm and start shouting at the team players because at the end of the day that is the bunch of players one has to play with. Uh, as far as ma'am the second part of the question like what one can do uh, for, for uh, a better teamwork. Ma'am I believe that one should have a very good gelling with all uh, the, the, the uh, players should have a very good gelling with each other. They should always exude whatever there is in their minds even if there is a kind of performance pressure they are feeling so that kind of an atmosphere so it should not just be a professional gelling like meeting once in a while but the team should stay together and also there should be a uh, emphasis on uh, or on improving the skills of the team wherever it, it lacks so only with a uh, conducive and a positive atmosphere one can uh, bring about their uh, weaknesses and that can be worked upon. Okay, and also you have got a letter of appreciation for crop diversification. So can you tell me what is crop diversification? Uh, Ma'am, crop diversification basically means to change the cropping pattern of a particular uh, field to some other crop. And why is it considered an important agricultural strategy? Ma'am, uh, because following a monocropping culture, culture, it basically depletes upon the soil conditions. It also, uh, if it's a water guzzling crop, so it has a negative consequence on, uh, uh, on the water table also. So for a proper soil and water health, plus also increasing the productivity of the land, crop diversification is needed, ma'am. 
right uh, last before we conclude this i just want to ask you uh, you have been making attempts at civil services since 2014 but i see that you did not attempt for four consecutive years 2018 to 21 any specific reason for this uh sir i, I joined nabard <coughs> in december 2016 uh so after that sir i due to my some official obligations i could not get much time to devote to the studies and also uh i had the age left for the examination sir but my attempts were uh left only to two so i thought it would not be wise for me to just attempt it for the sake of attempting maybe when i am better prepared for it uh i should take the attempt sir all right uh the formal interview is over you can wait outside till we call you back for inter feedback thank you sir okay thank you come in abhin man thank you please have a seat thank and you, what's your self assessment of this interview of your sir, performance it was uh, moderate uh, kind of an interview i would mm-hmm. not say it was an outstanding one Why? Why do you say so? I believe, sir, I could have done better in some questions. How? Uh, maybe, sir. I believe that uh, I was just speaking too much in certain questions. I could have been more precise and to the point. Okay, that's it. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, perfectly. Uh, you have assessed it very good, only as good as uh, we could have guessed. because our assessment is also the same you have an excellent personality very good background very good experience of working and performance and we find that you are an excellent or per- good match for uh, a very good uh, performance in interview also but wahi pe aa jata hai ki uh, at some points at some questions you were too lengthy right you can try to be uh, crisp and you can try to structure your answers better i am not saying that uh, they were not good the answers that you gave a good content was good but at some point uh, the panel starts losing interest when the answer goes little longer because the way you were communicating you were holding our interest but the moment it go- and you raise our expectation and then when you lengthen your answer too much it becomes a little uh, uh, distracting right so you can work on that uh i suppose this will be your last attempt yes sir and first interview uh sir this is my third interview acha isme nahi cover hua okay all right and uh, already selected in civil uh, services yes sir last year i got danix okay so, uh, it's not being reflected here in uh, but i think uh, you may not have gotten any opportunity to uh, say yes, this sir. but sir now they have acha we didn't they have hmm? uh, recently like just a couple of days back Achha, they opened it again so Chika, Chika. i'll be filling it up all right so we find you a very good put very good candidate and just we could not cover budget and rural uh, sector and agriculture sector you may want to if you have not worked or seen those numbers and analysis uh, wo bhi cover kar lena but otherwise we can wish you the best thank you theek hai how many marks in class in the sir 193 <coughs> सो कहाँ कम रह गया था पहले सर मतलब मेंस में सर थोड़ा स्कोर कम था किस में सर ज्यादा किसी में भी नहीं था अच्छा कम भी किसी में नहीं था सर ओके ओके बट हाँ ऑप्शनल में देर वॉज स्कोप ऑफ इम्प्रूवमेंट ओके ऑप्शनल में इवन जीएस में भी था सर एटलीस्ट एक या दो स्पाइक चाहिए यस सर तो वो मतलब मेन्स में किसी सब्जेक्ट में वो स्पाइक नहीं था ठीक है इंटरव्यू कब है सर अभी डेट नहीं आई डेट नहीं आई ठीक विल डू गुड इंटरव्यूज एट लीस्ट विल डू गुड मेंस में भी आई सपोज तुमने इंप्रूव किया ही होगा ठीक है सो ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू सर मिस्टर क्लार्क थैंक थैंक यू सर